Alrighty, I said I was going to do a watercolor every day, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, you know, the minute I say every day, you know what happens. So I'm in my watercolor bin, and I'm going to put up a photograph of my still life I set up. I'm not the best still life setter upper in the world. But I went to my watercolor chart. I did this years ago. And found a granulating pigment in a blue tone that I really like. And I'm going to just lightly wash that. And I want a, it's a buff colored paper that I have sitting behind it. And I would like to I don't want it yellowy. And Naples I think has white in it. I think a real pale, 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 pale yellow ochre might work. So I've picked out Daniel Smith Lapis. And it won't take very much. That'll be enough to last for a long time. I'm going to add about 15 or 20 Daniel Smiths to my palette. Let's see. I want to get rid of that ugly little clump of baby poop. There's some mauve that I left. This looks like a new gamboge. There's a little bit of red left in my. I want y'all to see how watery that is. That little bit of red that was left in that bucket isn't going to hurt things at all. So I'm going to do this wash. Well, added just a little more of the yellow ochre. Now where this blue and yellow go together, they're going to be a little greenish. Now this is just basically what we've been doing. A little more water. Except I'm planting it a little more. I've got a number 12 Kalinsky. Forgotten what a pleasure. Getting some great granulation. 
All right, so we've got our little composition going. I'm looking at it from life, and you guys are looking at it. And I think we're going to stop right there. And we're going to let it do its thing. It is pouring down rain outside, so I won't be sitting this out in the sun to dry. Awesome granulation. I'm resisting the urge to do anything else to it until this gets dry. So I'm going to put it out of my sight and we'll revisit it tomorrow. Alrighty, I am back with my little watercolor and um, drawing a contour drawing of this little silver pot. And a la Charles Reed, I don't take my pencil off the paper. And if you goof, back up, keep your pencil on the paper. And don't erase it. It's the mark of your hand. And that's all you need. I don't think you can see it, but maybe I can... Zoom it where you can see it. It's not perfect. Didn't intend for it to be. This is not a drawing to be a drawing. This is a drawing to be a painting. I used Daniel Smith Lapis Lazuli to get this wonderful granulating effect. The background is kind of a real thin watery yellow ochre with some quinacridone gold in it. Um, it was in the palette. So I'm going to get that palette back out. The palette that uh, I used most often back in the day when I was doing watercolor is this heavy, it's plastic, but it has the heft of porcelain. This is the Wilcox palette, and his name is Mark Wilcox, who wrote a book. Actually, he has He's done a lot of work and experimenting <coughs> excuse me, with color. And one of his books is called, let me think about it, Yellow and Blue Don't Make Green. And it's been years, 10 or 15 years since I've read the book. But I do love this palette because it's set up like a color wheel. And the little tabs kind of give you... And those are printed on. Um, guide you in your color mixing between warms and cools. And um, anyway, here would be primaries, secondaries, tertiaries, and these are beyond the pale. So what I also did to ready myself for this was I went to my color swatches. I need to rearrange these a little bit. I was looking for some colors in the same family as the lapis. That's such a beautiful color. Here's the lapis. And there are quite a few that do the job. Cobalt violet. This uh, Windsor Newton Permanent Magenta. Because I definitely want to stay cool. And this uh, Windsor Newton Altar of Marine Violet is also nice. 
and the M. Graham ultramarine violet goes a little bit more to the blue side rather than the purple side. Minute differences, however, these little wisteria blossoms do have a lot of different colors in them. So I, I don't want to get too nitpicky, but I do want to get those colors. I, I want to get some unusual pigments out. So I've got my bucket. This is, these are reds. if I can get into it. We're looking for Chronocridone Violet. Not really. Maybe in the purple and blue bucket. Potter's pink. That's a Daniel Smith color I haven't used very much. And if I remember right, it is a... Come on now. Potter's pink. No, that's more of a, that's a warmer color than what I want. Okay, so we're going to have to move to the blue bucket. Cobalt Violet. Um, Dioxazine Purple. Windsor Violet. That was one of the ones that might put. Theo Indigo Violet. That's a good one. And I know, let's just look and see what that duotone is. Hmm. I guess I've missed putting it in here. Well, we need to catch up on that, don't we? Alrighty, let's just get that little baby out of there. I still want that magenta. It's got to be in this bucket. I'm not using any warm colors at this point, so I'm going to clean out. I know, I hate to waste the pigment. That I'm going to leave because that might be usable. Remote out of the way. You spray these. 
these colors have been in here 15 years and they are still very very good let's see what we got I'm gonna put this right over here Just a dot. Look at that little bitty dot. Can you see that? Not much. And this is the Dual Chrome Violet Fantasy. And that's a that's gonna be a whitish. Okay. So that's gonna be a white that dries to have a purple cast when you turn the paper. So it might get used somewhere. This is the Doxazine Purple, or Violet. Now this Violet will knock your socks off, so you have to be careful with it. Magenta may not get used because... Cap is stuck. An excellent tool for lids that are stuck is a nutcracker. That worked. Hair pliers work too. Hot water works too. Ooh, that was one to come out of there. And now look what a mess you made. These paints are like mushrooms. They've been sitting in a dark closet. This is the magenta. Well, I thought that was the magenta. What was that one? That was throwing go violet. Alright. I say I write a lot, don't I? I write, I write, I write. I don't think I want that one. Be careful. Be careful, baby. I have a number six Kalinsky. And what I want to do is test this. I'll just turn one of these over. This bluish one is the best for my next stage. I'll get organized here in a minute. Prop this back up. Look there, I got paint on it already. Well, hello, hello. Just hang out in there. I don't care. Um, these flowers are, well, you can see them in the picture. They're clusters of little tiny, tiny t 9 c flowers and I am not going to paint every one. Aren't you lucky? Getting my nest built. It's an essential part. I 
I'm dipping into some of that purplish color, purple reddish color that was on there first. Right there, it's kind of a dull. I'm going to put a little bit of that little bit of the wrong one. I want this bluish one. I want it real watery. like that. Now I want some of these edges to be really wet so I'm going to pull that out. Try to use the belly of your brush as much as you can. So those little hairs on the end, once they're gone, they're gone. I want it real watery. And the, the edge of that one is going to come down over the little silver pitcher. Pull it out. By that I mean I'm just wetting the edge with clean water. I'm letting the pigment push to the outside of where that wet mark is with the brush. It will go a little lower because of the way I've got my paper tilted. Now I'm coming back in with a little stronger color. It too will move. It sounds like et tu birthday. This way you can sneak up on your subject. That's what I say all the time. Sneak up on it. Want a real raggedy edge. So far so good. Now I've got another one back here that's it's more of a grayed down. So if I put just a little bit of my purple mixture and a little bit of my yellow. I got a darker color. I added a little bit of an ultramarine blue. This one is way back in the background. It's 
it's a cooler color because it's in the background it's going to be allowed to fade I can come back when this layer is dry-ish and I can decide which areas I want to pull out with more detail or if I want to add just a hint of my good color here and there. Some ultramarine blue. Just lay it in there and let the pigment do the work. I'm going to come along right now while these are still wet. It's still wet enough to get some of that ultramarine blue working. And I'm going to come back in and soften this edge. No hard edges at this point. Put another one in here. saw some lines developing I wasn't real crazy about. Let them drip. I've got another one over here in the background. Just hanging around. Somebody's dinging me.
This is a little bit of the um, magenta. At this point, I'm going to <clears throat> loosen a few of these edges, maybe. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll be back. Hello, it's Vicki Ross here. Well, I did a crappy job sharpening that pencil. Oh well. Um, I forgot to film painting the little silver cup. So there's enough good stuff in that video that I thought I would just paint the cup, paint the picture, and I'm going to take a picture of it, hmm. I don't remember it having that much tarnish on it. I'm never going to get it exactly like I had it. Okay. That's really strange. Same height, and look at the, can you see that? It's really kind of strange. I wonder what I moved over here. Yeah, for one thing, it was sitting about like that. Huh. Well, we're just going to go with it. I'll either... What do I want to do? I want to paint from the same picture y'all painted from. Or that I painted the original from. I guess my flowers could have added that darkness. That's some of it. That 
that's a little more interesting shadow pattern at least. Alright, so here we go. I have a plain old pencil, an advertising pencil from Merle Jim. Ha! Isn't that a joke? Alright, I do a contour drawing, which means a modified contour drawing means that you can look back and forth from your paper to your object, but you never pick your pencil up off the paper. Okay? So it's really cool. Just kind of scribble your starting place. Come up and around very lightly. Come back around a little lower than your starting place. Curves out and down. And the handle comes up and out back down when you need to change direction just leave your pencil on the paper Come back up, follow that curve, Well, that is really really rough if you need to make a change just go ahead and draw it in and leave the mark of the artist okay now that's fine we're just going to leave it let me get my paint palette I have my number six Kalinsky brush. Kalinsky's, ooh, I got a, I got a tip curled on that. Um, Kalinsky's were designed, or are designed, there's another one that kind of got a curl in it. They'll straighten back out. Um, they're natural hair, and they're real fat in the belly, so the hairs are made, they're, they're put together by hand, there are shorter ones in the middle and longer ones on the outside that come to that point. Now the main difference in Kalinske's and synthetic Kalinske's is that these are designed to release the water in the belly in a more controlled fashion where synthetics have a tendency to dump what's in this brush all at once. So a real Kalinske will serve you for a long, long time. So we had some real loose, can you see it? Some real loose cool color on there. And it was yellow ochre. So I'm going to start with an underwash. Something similar to the color of the paper. So I'm trying to mimic what was there before. And I'm going directly on dry paper. This is Fabriano Cold Press, 140 pound. And that's all I'm doing is kind of simulating what we had before. I'm going to dry it. It's still a little bit damp. 
Can y'all see my little practice face there? This was a pad I had taken with me to, um, or with us to, just turned it off. Salzburg in Prague. I forgot where I went. There it is. And she was just sitting in this little journal. That was practicing with Charles Reed. And there's the cup. The picture. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. When this is cool to the touch, it's not quite dry. I want it all. I did a better job drawing on that one. But we're not going to talk about that. Okie dokie. Now. This is a warm bronzy color. And I mixed a black with some dark blue. That kind of looks like a Prussian. I added some green. And I added some, I think this is more than alizarin. Look at that luscious dark. It's a little too much red, so I'll come back in and add some more green. Now that's how I use my darks. So I'm going to come in this little picture first with some light. And I do see some purples, so we're going to put a little bit of purple in there. And I'm going to paint what I see in the vase. So I'm seeing a reflection of that flower. Very loose and watery. Seeing a little bit more right there. I'm seeing a little bit of a goldish, grayish color. A warm neutral. That was some of the green that I mixed here and it picked up some of the yellow ochre that I mixed for the background. And it gets a little bit darker right here. And it gets quite a bit darker down in here. Cool color, a cool gray, and a warm gray. Get my pencil out of the way. That color comes on up. I'm using the belly of the brush. And try to use your brush and not pick it up any more than you really have to. That cool color comes on around here. And around there. And there's a shadow right there. And we've got a pretty good sized light hitting right here, and that's from the reflection, it's from the light on my desk light. So I just tap it and encourage those to blend a little bit. And there's another little light spot right there. And if I come in and soften this edge just a hair, now I need a dark see if this is set up enough so that I can put a dark in here. The back side of this picture has a dark on the edge. I didn't want to wait until it was too dry. And it picks back up there. A little bit there. 
We also have some of the dark here. Around here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that warm. Throw in a little bit of the dark. Take your time. I say that because I often have to remind myself this is not a race. Trying to save some of the lights. If your pencil drawing is off a little bit, don't worry about it. Now we've got a, uh, a light color right in here, and a little bit darker right here. Now I can see, let's see, I've got a dark coming down here. I'm painting shapes, okay? And this shape right here happens to be my apron. It's black. And this is kind of a purplish color. It comes right around here. And another dark comes down here. I'm not paying any attention to what it is I'm painting. What the object is. I'm just painting shapes. Come back into this warm gray. Very slow and deliberate. Try to stay off the hair on your brush, the point. Because once those little point hairs are gone, they're gone. Add some dark. feet. A little bit more warm. Now if you see any areas that you want to lift, wet your brush, just lay it on that spot, and blot.
Maybe a little more dark right in here. Takes a pretty steady hand sometimes. Wet my brush and then blotted it, bringing it back in as a thirsty brush, which will help move that around. I think this might be the reflection of my arm. Silver is a warm metal, but I'm picking up lots of purple because the flowers were reflecting off of it. Now, that's the part I left out the other day. I'm going to quit there because this is just for you guys to see a quick demo. And here's the one I did the other day, which is really better. But they are what they are. You can't duplicate yourself. So that's why I don't worry about somebody else duplicating my work. Because it ain't going to happen. I can't even do myself. So I'm going to add that to the video. And howdy ho, goodbye, I'm out of here.